Well, hello. Hello and welcome. Welcome to Around the Town with Mark. I am Mark Whalen, your host, and you know that we are always glad to have you tune in and visit with us. Well, as you all probably know, our area is just full of all kinds of wonderful, beautiful historic buildings, uh, great places to visit. There's one a little bit lesser known than some of the others, but we want to take care of that, called the, or commonly known as the Mother Bailey House, uh, Groton Bank on Thames Street. And my two guests today are going to tell us all kinds of things there are to know about this wonderful historic landmark. So allow me to introduce my two guests, Dr. Susan Archer and Hallie Keeler. Holly, Susan, Hi Thank you. welcome to Around the Town with Mark. Thanks for yeah. having us. Would you each uh, introduce yourselves to our guests? Just tell us a little bit about uh, what your connection is with, uh, with the Mother Bailey House. Uh, I'm Dr. Susan Archer, and I am currently the president of the newly formed Friends of the Anna Warner Bailey House. Uh, we are working to build the funding so that we can take the house over from the city with we hope to take the house over from the city and renew it and make it a viable part of Groton Bank and the Thames Street Historic District. All right, wonderful. And uh, Hallie? Well, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the house, if you'd like. I'm, sure. I'm, on the, I'm a member of the Friends of the Anna Warner Bailey Friends Group. It's a, it's a mouthful. Okay. Um, I'm on the Friends of the Mother Bailey House. I'm the co-parliamentarian. And um, Anna, Anna Bailey, Anna Warner Bailey, I'm having a hard time with this, I'm sorry. No, oh, it's, it's, well, the house is an historic landmark down mm -hmm. on Dame Street. Right. And um, uh, I know it was, it was been changed and built over the, but it's curious to know, or interesting to know, you mentioned that it is owned by um, the it's, city. Right, it's currently owned by the city of Groton. And uh, it's not occupied. Uh, some people may have been on the historic tour the other night mm -hmm. and seen that it, it really is not in the best of shape. You can see from the photograph of the front of the house that it needs some work. And when you walk inside the interior of the house, it, you, it becomes obvious that you need, it needs more work. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that the city had done uh, a few years ago Perhaps you can it, talk to that a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, a couple of years ago, the city formed a commission, a committee to study reuse of the Mother Bailey House because they owned it. Um, it was in disrepair when they acquired it. It did not um, fare any better through the years that they owned it because there just wasn't the money to maintain it. Mm. So the city thought that it could be um, better used. So there was a committee formed to study the different possibilities. And the committee came up with some suggestions and it was given to the city council and the city council explored them. And in the meantime, they didn't come to any decisions. Um, we probably, they thought the best use probably would have been to turn it into a residential um, establishment, but nobody really wanted that mm. because the, there are so many historic homes right in the Thames Street area that there were people who felt that another museum or historic representation would not be, um, wouldn't succeed. So it was sort of tabled. And then the Anna Warner Bailey chapter of the DAR, whom we had spoken with um, all through this process, they mobilized and formed this Friends Committee that is now actively working to raise money to the point where we can be financially stable and then buy the house from the city and turn okay. it into a, a cultural center. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when was, do we know when the house was, was built? Yeah, the house was built in, the plaque on it says 18, 1782. Mm. Um, that was not the original house on that site. The fa it was built on the foundation of a house that was burned during the Battle of Groton Heights when Benedict oh. Arnold burned Groton in New London. Mm. Um, but it was built in 1782 by Dr. Amos Prentice. Now, Dr. Amos Prentice um, was the doctor who attended to the wounded at the battle, which was in 1781, September 6, 1781. And coincidentally, 
he and Anna Warner may have crossed paths because Anna Warner uh, was orphaned and she lived with her grandmother and uncle and aunt out in Candlewood Hill. And when her uncle went to the battle, they expected him back. He didn't come back. No. So his, his wife, her, um, her aunt, sent her to the fort to find him. So while she was looking for her uncle, she very well may have crossed paths with um, Dr. Prentice, whose house she ended up living in. It's just a, it's just a, a coincidental side story. It has nothing sure. to, but, but that's the house she lives in. At any rate, she did find her uncle. He was um, among the wounded at the Ebenezer Avery house. His dying wish was to see his wife, child, and newborn baby. So she went back up by horse the several miles to the family farm, carried the baby, the mother and the um, other child. They came back to see her uncle. Her uncle was um, Edward Mills. And did they make it? <laughs> it's yes, a great they story. Made, yeah. They yeah. made it, and then he died. Oh, wow, what a great story. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. yeah. So later on, um, she did end up marrying Elijah Bailey, who was, um, at one time, he was the postmaster. They had a tavern in the house. They married in um, 1783. And in about 1800, they went into innkeeping on the Thames. Um, that was fairly common, wasn't it, back, yeah, back she in, was, in those days? Yeah, she relatively. was 30 at the time. At any rate, um, so the house served many mm -hmm. uses. It was a tavern because it was on what was called the Boston Post Road, Broad Street, which is one side of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, in this picture, it's the left side as we're looking at it. Okay. That was the Boston Post Road. So travelers stopped there on the way to the ferry, which was across the street. And they, um, they would go in for refreshment. And Anna would tell, she was, she was a very colorful character. And she would tell great stories. And she would sing and she would dance. Really? Wow. Yeah. So a real character. She, she, she was, was a real lively. character. She was very <laughs> lively. Um, and... Elijah Bailey was also the postmaster around that time. We're still trying to figure out where in the house the post office um, was. Wow. That, that's so that's, that's how she got there. Wow. It's not what made her famous. No. Would you like to hear that? I'd love to hear what made her famous. All right. Well, during the Battle of Groton Heights, of course, everybody took to the hills which is one of the reasons that the fort was so poorly manned, because a lot of people had fled inland when they saw the, the ships. So during the War of 1812, the ships came into the um, harbor again and blocked the harbor, and everybody again thought, we're going to have another massacre. So again, they took to the hills, but Anna hadn't gone yet. She stayed behind with her belongings and hadn't gone yet. Um, so Major Simeon Smith... Man, hastily manned Fort Griswold just in case there was another attack. Mm -hmm. But they realized that they didn't have enough flannel wadding for the cannons. So he went walking through the neighborhood looking for flannel. So the story is that um, his messenger met Ms. Mother Bailey, Mrs. Bailey, on the street. She said, what are you doing? He said, well, we need flannel desperately for the cannons. So the story goes that she, on the street, dropped her red flannel petticoat, oh my. gave it to him mm -hmm. to use as wadding for the cannons. As it turned out, they didn't need it. There's a picture you can see of, um, that represents her giving, her, giving, giving her. up her petticoat. Wow. Um, as it turns out, they didn't need it because the, the fort was not attacked, but they ran her petticoat about the petticoat up the flag anyway oh just wow. to honor her yeah so she became a national hero that's i mean we have to make mention that that for the day you know that was very that bold was very bold I but mean, oh, yeah. again wow. she was yeah. she was a bold character she was mm -hmm. not conventional in any sense of the word yeah. um so that was not that was courageous and 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 patriotic and yeah the same but time. word got out and she subsequently was visited by many presidents 
um, President Monroe, General Lafayette, and President Andrew Jackson all stopped oh. and visited mm -hmm. the tavern. In fact, the um, wrought iron. iron fence, the uh, gorgeous iron fence that surrounds, parts of it still surrounds the house, was given by Andrew Jackson. Yes. Oh, so it's original it's yes. back to the period. Right, it's original to oh, the period. Oh, that's very exciting to have. Yeah. So yes. she became very um, famous for that, and she was, she was hailed as a national heroine. Um, her title, Mother Bailey, was purely honorary because she didn't have children, but she was, it was, a, it was an honorary title. And unfortunately, she met her end at, at the ripe old age of 83 by... Um, well, at, 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 again, at that, that, at that, that time. day, that, that time, that, that's... Well, well, yeah, we think she probably could have lived a little bit longer had she not met her demise the way she did. Yes, she, had snoo oh she was snoozing in front of the fire, and her petticoats caught fire. Oh. And she was dead within the hour. She was famous for her petticoat, but the on petticoat multiple levels. turned yes. around and did her in. Yeah, yes. her, oh, her, her skirt. Her, you know, oh, the embers dear. from the fire. Yeah. Her skirt caught, oh, and dear. she died. But it, she was 93, and she certainly um, deserved every bit of fame and honor that she got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This wow. is the reason we feel so strongly that this house that she lived in for so many, many years not be, yeah. not be allowed to... Um, well, just deteriorate, to deteriorate into, right. into yeah. so it, the house can't, I mean, people can't go in to visit the house no. at this point, but anyone that's interested certainly can go down on Thames Street and walk and, and, and look at the front of the house to get an idea of, of yes. what oh, it's all about. Certainly, anybody walking on Thames Street or in, in the Groton Bank area could head down there and take a look at the outside, mm -hmm. the exterior of the house. Um, what we want to do, and, and our main focus with the Friends Group, is to raise the funds so that, number one, we can fix the outside, because there are some things that really need to be redone, mm -hmm. and renew the inside and turn it into something that we all can use as part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, on the, we'd like to turn the first floor into more of a public space, mm -hmm. where we would have perhaps a, vis a visitor center for the Groton Bank area, because it's on that critical corner, the mm -hmm. house is. Mm -hmm. um, um, we might do some museum-like features in one room. So you, if we're trying to find some period furniture, and we, we think we might be able to do some things with perhaps an architectural display. So architectural students could come and see how things were built at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. um, but generally try to bring, bring the first floor back to a resemblance of what it was during her, her time there. Essentially, yes. Essentially, we, yeah. But we want it to be something that's vibrant in the community now and can be used right. in the community. Right. And we do have a larger room on the first floor that could be used for meetings and for people to perhaps do some research. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we'd like to take the second floor and make that archive space so that we can keep um, archives from the Fort Griswold, archives from the DAR, and other organizations who need some space. Certainly. Yeah. So that yeah. we yeah. have a central location where anyone doing research on Groton's history would be able to come and, and get to those primary documents. Well, that would be yeah. a very appropriate use mm -hmm. for, for yeah. that type of None space. None exists right now. Because you certainly right can't now. open the second floor for visitors no. without no. having to put in elevators or right. whatever. We, so we, we, we'd like can. to avoid that. Yeah, yes. no, certainly yeah. you can. There, there yeah. is no central historic repository in the city of Groton, in Groton, other than the, the records at Town Hall and at Groton Public Library. But there's a lot of material, boxes and boxes and boxes. And oh boxes. yeah, and it, it it would be great to have a, oh, a yeah. proper home for those mm -hmm. things yeah. and, and instead of having them in, in, a, in a, people's on a attics shelf. and yeah, yeah. 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 The yeah. other thing we want to do is turn the basement into a display area because you can enter the basement from the outside. Okay. So we would have to do some expansion of that space outside so people could get to it. Mm -hmm. But the the basement is where the ta we the tavern was. And oh, so there's okay. still some some of the original brick. There's a fireplace. Yeah, the fireplace. And what we'd like to do is make that viewable through perhaps a, a plexiglass um, 
vis visible center so that when the museum function is open during the day, people would be able to go down and look in and, and see a typical tavern scene, which that, I think would add. Oh, that would add tremendous. Yeah. It, it it's really way down would, on the list, but yes. yeah, it but would, it be would great. show all yeah. the different uses of the house historically, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, because most people don't think of having a tavern in, in, in a home. No. But it was fairly common back then. So. That was one of the suggestions people did make when the thought of, when the um, people were asking well, what to do, what should we do with the Mother Bailey house? A lot of people said, tavern, make it a tavern, we need a bar. But of course it's not zoned for that and that would not yeah. be an appropriate use it, of the... Uh, I, could, I could see that yeah. being done because I, I go up to <laughs> Cape Cod a lot and you, there are antique mm -hmm. homes like yeah. that that are, that are used a little bit like yeah. that and, and they become wildly popular but um, perhaps not the, the best use for, no. for the mother. No. Well, and, no. and we want it to be part of that historic tour area in, in you know, where you have the Avery Cop House and the Ebenezer Avery House and the, the Monument House. And, and so it needs to have that same flavor, but Certainly. show how she contributed to the mm -hmm. community. Well, and it's, it's a very rich, wonderful yeah, area. Yeah. And it's part of the Heritage Trail, the, Heritage, yeah. the Thames River Heritage Park. Um, initiative. That's Which is, in the mm -hmm. summer, you, obviously yeah, you've got yeah. the water taxi, right, that's, right. that's it, apparently very, very mm -hmm. popular this year. Yeah. So. so because of that, what we're doing with the Friends Group, <laughs> number one, right now we're raising the money, because before we can approach the city about taking possession of the house, um, we, we need to raise the money so that we would be able to show that we can do the things we want to do. Certainly. Um, we have a number of different fundraising functions going on very soon in December, on the 3rd of December, on mm -hmm. Sunday eve afternoon, afternoon from 2 to 4 mm -hmm. at Par 4. Okay, write this down, everybody. Write par, this four, down. par 4, everybody December par 3rd, four. Okay. from 2 to 4, we will be having a meet and greet function. Um, it's $10 per person at the door. And Jim Streeter, the town historian, is going to talk about the Anna Warner Bailey House, Anna Warner Bailey, and the Groton Bank in general, I think. Um, but that $10 also gets you pizza. Right, yes. that $10 gets you pizza. Gets you pizza. Thank pizza. you. Okay. And salad. And, and salad. Pizza and salad. Okay, oh yeah. so that $10, just go out and just have yourself a, a pizza and you're supporting a wonderful exactly. cause. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, right. We're, we've started a, a Cans for Coins project with uh, members of the local chapter of the DAR, and we are going to expand that to more members of the community. We'd love for kids to so get involved in us, this. Tell us how that works. All you have to do is get take an empty coffee can or coffee container, poke a little hole in the lid, and then you just put coins or change, or you know, we'll take dollars too, yeah. um, and collect them. And then when the can is full or, or half full, you can, they can, somebody can bring that money in a plastic bag with their name on it and their address to one of our meetings, or they can contact us, um, and we'll, I will come get it. They can just send an email to the email address at the, on the screen, and they'll get a, a, a tax receipt for whatever they donated, and then that money will go into our bank account to continue to add to the money that we're trying to collect. What about cans for coins for Halloween? Oh. Having the kids go out with a can like that as they trick or treat, and and what a great way for kids to not yeah. just get candy for themselves, but to also say, hey, would you support this cause? That's sort of where I got the idea because I remember as a kid collecting right. pennies for UNICEF. Right. And it's the yeah, same yeah. idea. Yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. We we do have a meeting for anybody who would like to get more information about that. We have a meeting uh, Wednesday, October 25th, and the next one would be Wednesday, December 6th. Our mm -hmm. meetings are at 7 p.m. at the Groton Public Library, and we talk about the things that we're doing and the different projects that we're looking to get involved in. Um, we've done some things with some historic or history days mm -hmm. and things like that, and we're just really trying to get the community to join us. We would love to have some more members. Well, and get oh, the word out. Yeah. To the, membership. The, we are taking memberships, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, can, I think we have the website uh, mm -hmm. information that we can, yeah. Frank, yeah, there we go, right there. So anyone that is interested in contributing, joining, volunteering, can can either contact you um, or, or uh, Our website's in progress. Right now right. we have a Gmail okay. address. Okay. But so our website's Gmail, being built. Keep 
keep coming keep back, looking. keep looking, and there yeah. will be a website. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. And, and in fact, we also have a PayPal account tied to the email address that's shown on the screen. So okay. if somebody right. wants to make a donation, we would be more than happy to take that as well. You can do that with a credit card. Okay, so, so please, everybody, nice. write down that Gmail address, and don't be afraid to contact mm -hmm. the organization through that to please. help. Yeah, please do, because mm -hmm. it's... You know, we, like I said in the introduction, we have a lot of wonderful historic homes, but something like the Mother Bailey House is so unique because it really has such a tremendous history and the petticoat and mm -hmm. all those types of things. It's, you know, not every antique home comes with such a great story. Oh, and, and her stories are, are important. And, the, you know, there are some additional stories from before her time in the house that are interesting. And, you know, we've, we've talked to... Um, members of the Groton Bank Historical Society, and they, they have more of, a, of her history as well as the history of the house. And so we as a community need, need to really do some focus on our heritage because it's important to know how Groton became sure. Groton. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now, mm -hmm. Holly, here's a question for you. Sure. In your book, Ghosts on Groton Bank, <laughs> is there, I don't remember, I know I have the book, I've read it, I had you on the show talking about the book, is there a ghost story associated with mm -hmm. the Mother Bailey? There are quite a few stories There associated. are. Is there one in particular that you'd want to share today? Um, well, one is the poor utility workers for Groton mm -hmm. Utilities. Every house, they go, every historic building they go into, they, they see something or hear something. And in the case of the Mother Bailey house, um, two workers were in the basement and actually one snapped a picture of what looked like um, a soldier. Uh, you could see his head, the outline of a backpack. He was standing and um, in, the, in the basement. Um, the Fame Society for Paranormal Investigation did do um, an investigation there with Marion Galbraith and she, uh, she told, tells some of the stories of, of some of the um, voice recordings, the EVP recordings really? they've got, yeah. yes. which is, you know, what the, the guys Ooh. are saying, you know, um, Anna, Anna, are you here? And you can hear her say, I am. And oh, wow. There's a couple of, Goosebumps there's, there's already. A couple of other very good it. stories. One thing, she hated the British. The, yeah, this because, story is funny. <laughs> because, because of the, um, the battle and the loss of her uncle and mm -hmm. the devastation to Groton, she hated the British. And at one point, her house had passed from private hands and was, was um, made into apartments. So I think the story was that um, one of the young men who was renting an apartment there had a British girlfriend and she came to stay, she came to visit and something upset her so much that she ran screaming from mm. the house and never came back. Oh, wow. So we're assuming <laughs> yeah. that great. Mother Bailey just didn't like the British and oh. didn't want any Brits in her house. Wow. Oh, there's lots of great stories. And that was in the last century. Yeah, and oh, that yeah. Was that, oh, that was so, recent. That was recent, So that's, so, that's yeah. we're not, yeah, modern times. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. I, there are people who believe that she's still in that house and... And yeah. So, and that's part of why we really need to make it something where you can see who she was and how she did. Yeah. We can't guarantee you're going to see or hear anything paranormal, no. but, um, but it's always you know, the opportunity. One never knows. One never knows. Gives the house a lot of cachet. Yeah. Maybe yeah. she'll be at par four. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I wouldn't having be surprised if she wasn't having yeah. a beer. Yeah. 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 Really. <laughs> yeah, that's that's terrific. I love these stories. You know. Oh, they're great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Well, of course, your your book is fantastic. Oh, thank you. Everyone thank you. Um, one of the keys about her book, please, if anybody is interested in purchasing Holly's book, she has donated oh, her yeah. royalties from the book to the Friends Group, so that we can. That's part of our fundraising. Yeah, it's right. anybody yeah. who buys her book, we get those royalties. The royalties. Well, yeah. we only have a few minutes left, so. You want to just give us a real quick overview of your book? Well, the book is Ghosts, on Groton Bank, Ghosts of Groton Bank, and it's a collection of stories of paranormal happenings around the city in various buildings, such as the Avery Cop House, the Fort, the Bill Memorial Library, the Mother Bailey House, um, as well as private homes and businesses in the area. Um, it was compiled... Um, as a joint effort, um, I, I brought in 
asked Leslie Evans of the Avery Cobb House and David Rose from Fort Griswold to contribute their stories of their, their places mm -hmm. to the book. And it was decided at the time that it was put together that all the royalties would go towards the maintenance or saving the Mother Bailey House. I just got a second royalty check. The book's been out a little more than a year. We've gotten two royalty checks, so. Congratulations. That's thank great. you. Almost $500 has yeah. gone to well, the Mother Bailey, to the Anna, Anna Warner ba Bailey the, friends. <laughs> A mouthful. It is. It's a, there's it's a lot a, to it's say. Mouthful. It's just the Mother Bailey it's House. Easy, the Friends Group. Yeah, the, the Friends, friends Group. group. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, any donations, you know, we can get. So the more books that are sold, the more royalties that will come in. So every time I get a deposit into my account, it goes right over to Mother That's Bailey. That's terrific. And, and that book can be, I know, I, as I said, I've read the book. Yeah. It's really a fun book. Mm -hmm. Anyone that has a connection with Groton or our area yeah. really should read it because... It's it, more history than anything. Yes, but it's, a, it, but it's fascinating history and yeah. it does have a little bit of a twist of certain un, yeah. unexplained things. So it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's fun. And, and this can be found bought at the, li that, the Bill Memorial Library? No, the library or doesn't have any no? more. It doesn't have them. Um, Groton public may have some mother okay. ba excuse me um avery cop may still have them okay um friends of fort grizzled have them okay and i have them i still okay. have quite a few copies we All do right. have another um event coming up in november november 13th for the groton bank historical association we'll be doing a presentation on the book and, and selling them there great but the more and you can get them on amazon Okay. And in right. local yeah. bookstores. Well, I encourage everyone. Bank Square. It's, it's so oh, yes. great. So, Bank Square. So we're down to just two minutes. Uh, is there anything that, that you each like to briefly say that we, we haven't mentioned that, that is important? I think it's we're trying to create a, a revolution in Groton, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, we want to make a difference in Groton's history, and we need the community's help to renew the Mother Bailey House and make it part of that, that main corner of the Groton Historic Bank. And remind, uh, again, you have two meetings upcoming. If mm -hmm. anyone is interested in yes. joining or finding out more, tell us anyone again when can those come. are. Anyone, anyone can is come. open to everyone, it's mm -hmm. free, of uh, course. If yes. you want to know more about the house or you want to join. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have our meetings are on Wednesdays. The next one is October 25th. And then after that, our meeting, the following meeting would be December 6th. They are at 7 p.m. at the Groton Public Library. Terrific. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, December 3rd, uh, right. par 4, 2 to 4. Mm -hmm. Holly, any closing remarks? This, this really is a labor of love mm -hmm. for everybody involved. Um, everyone who's working on it, from the DAR to those of us in the city who have no affiliation but just are so keen on hist our, our city's history, um, want this, really need this to happen. The house is on the national, is in the National Register area. It cannot be torn down. Oh, so good. it that's, has to be. That's good to know. It that has to be. It's protected uh, mm -hmm. from, but only from disappearing. If, but only, but really only the if outside. the outside. Okay. Yeah, but only if money comes in so that it yeah. can be properly yeah. restored. Yeah. And certainly this, you know, these times that we have, it's, it's very difficult fundraising, oh, yeah. I know, um, for projects like this, but, but they are so important because it, this is another building that if it's gone, you can never bring it back. There's yeah. a, you, you can't, we can't keep letting history slip by. Right. Um, one of the things, one last thing, if anyone in town has experience or would like to gain experience writing grants, Great. We would love their help as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I want to thank you both for being my guests thank today. You. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, again, I want to <laughs> encourage uh, my audience um, to get involved with this wonderful, wonderful historic home. Uh, it's just terrific. I want to thank you all for tuning in for my show today. We'll be coming back to see you again real soon, and thank you.